Hi, thank you for checking out one of the on-demand resources through the Career Center at Cincinnati State Technical and Community College. We have um, a number of different uh, pre-recorded workshops um, that you may have found. Today, we are looking at our interviewing process um, and tips on how to, on how to interview. So one of the first things that we want to do is to kind of go through the phases of the hiring process. So, uh, so let's take a look at um, the hiring process overall. So first, there's an application or you've networked um, and were able to get asked for an interview. Um, an employer could ask um, pre-questions uh, before having someone come in for an interview. So that might be a writing sample. Um, there could be personality assessments that they are looking for. So um, some of those things will happen before you officially interview. Um, and then um, we actually go through our interviewing rounds. So there could be a first round interview, second round interview, and so forth. Generally, in this process um, of interviewing, it starts out over the phone and moves towards more person um, meetings and visits. So after you get uh, through your interviews, if you are the candidate that the employer has decided to offer the position to, um, that's when you can start talking salary negotiations, start dates, um, location confirmation benefits, um, and other things related to that. So um, in the state of Ohio, uh, just very briefly, um, Accepting an offer usually means receiving an offer letter and signing it. That offer letter will have the job title, the annual salary or the hourly pay, um, and the start date, um, who the employer is, and, and potentially location. All right, so what is an interview? An interview is a two-way conversation that determines the fit between employee, position, and employer. So just as much as an employer is evaluating you for your, for your fit with the position and fit in terms of the organization itself, you are also determining the fit of that employer for yourself and for what your career goals are. So the employer has already decided that you're potentially a good fit based off of your resume. The interview is what's going to get you the job. All right, so there are different types of interviews that you might come across. So there's the screening or the telephone interview. Um, so um, those are usually 20 to 30 minutes in length, um, and they are quick ways of screening out um, uh, maybe a handful of uh, individuals that they want to bring in in person or to advance into the next round. Um, you may be meeting individually one-on-one -on -one with someone. You may be meeting with more than one person, which is a panel. So that's when you're interviewed by more than one person at a time. Um, and I always suggest very highly to students to get used to, to that panel-based interview. Um, because that's the one that you're going to run into more likely as you continue to grow in your career. Um, there's also the small group um, interview process where they bring in all of the candidates at the same time. And then when everyone meets, they whittle out um, who they want to um, offer uh, more individualized um, interviews for. There's also the behavioral based interview and really that means it's an interview that has a lot of behavioral based questions in it um, where they're really looking at past performance and how it indicates future behavior. So there is also the task oriented or testing interview where essentially they might be assessing you and somewhere along, along the lines of your content knowledge. A really good example is maybe testing you on your words per minute. 
Um, there is the stress interview, and that stress interview is when an employer decides to, in some way, take that candidate out of their comfort zone to see how they react to stress. Um, there's the case-based um, interviewing process where, or interview question, where um, a candidate may be asked to solve a problem using their content knowledge. So um, virtual interviews, we'll definitely talk about this um, in our workshop today. So we're gonna talk about some good tips to get through those virtual interviews. Um, there's also teacher interviews where um, a teacher um, will want to have pre-selected parts of lesson plans that they've created, not only to present them in portfolio fashion, but also um, to demonstrate to hiring committees. All right, phases of the single interview process. So um, first, you're asked to come in for an interview, right? That could be, you could be asked in person, you can be asked over the phone um, or through email. Um, then there's the pre-interview prep. Um, there is um, the actual interview itself, and then there's the follow-up. All right. Um, keep in mind, um, there might be a, a situation depending on the employer and if they're using a third-party recruitment service. Um, when you answer the phone for an employer, um, before they even offer you the invitation that 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 they want to offer you, they might do some quick screening before that. Um, important tips, um, confirm the position that they are referring to. I know this sounds really silly. However, you may be in situations in, in your life where you are heavy into the job search um, or, or the hiring process um, and you're looking for, for different work. So um, you'll need to make sure that, that you confirm what position they're actually talking about. Um, be clear about your availability. Um, and if an employer, if they open with, when are you available? Um, be straightforward to continue that, um, that conversation. Um, thank the employer for the invitation and reinforce your excitement. Thank you so much for this invitation. I'm really excited about meeting with you on Thursday. Um, in general, uh, the first and last interview that a committee or a hiring manager has usually are the most easily rememberable. Um, for that committee or that person. Um, morning is best um, because it can be, uh, as someone who's been on hiring committees and is hired um, or helped hire, um, it can be a long day. <laughs> so morning uh, can, be, can be best. So you're definitely gonna wanna determine who, where, how, and agenda. So um, who are you meeting with? Where do you got to be and um, what method are you using to meet? So is it going to be in person? Is it going to be over the phone? Um, and also agenda. So there might be occasions where hey, you get into the second, third round of an interview and you're still meeting more people. They're still introducing you to new people. Um, they may have different things that they want you to do at their facility. You may go on a tour of it. Um, of that facility. So make sure you know what the agenda is for your day. All right, prepare and practice. So you are going to number one in your preparation, um, research the company. Make sure you know who they are, um, check into their reputation, see if you know anyone that works there. Um, you can use their company website. There's usually a career portion or an about us um, that you can look at as well. And then you're going to want to uh, really dig into the, the job description because you can pull out what we like to call knowledge, skills, and abilities. So you can look at um, the job tasks that they're asking you to complete in the job description, you can look at the skills that they're listing and the education that they're listing and think to yourself, what kind of questions do I think they're gonna ask me? What would I wanna know if I were them? 
And then you're going to want to take with you um, the any portfolio that you might have, um, especially if um, your occupation relies on you creating things. They, they might want to be able to, to see what you, the work that you've done prior. Um, make sure you take your resumes, your references. Make sure you take your cover letter that you submitted. Make sure you have copies if they need them. I mean, make sure you take a paper and pen um, because it is okay to take notes. Um, if you need to jot things down as you're trying to think through your answer. All right, and then prep your interview attire. You have one shot to make a really great impression. So make sure you put yourself together really well. All right. Um, making sure that you dress business professional is a safe choice that allows you to indicate to the employer that you're serious about the position and it shows a level of, of respect towards that employer. Much in the same way as making sure that you have submitted um, your resume and cover letter to them in addition to filling out their application. All right, so interviewing tips. Um, if you are gonna be meeting in person, arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. All right, so that you've uh, you so that you've located where you need to park, and that you've actually been able to get into the building, um, and that um, you are there on time, or rather early. To be early is to be on time. Um, remember that your uh, behavior can be observed the second you get there. Um, it could be a janitor. It could be the individual that you check in with to let your interviewer know that you're there. So smile. Um, be nice and cordial um, when, you, when you're interacting um, at the site. Uh, try to relax. Um, I understand inter interviews are very stressful. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of pressure. Um, that goes with um, make, making sure you become employed, um, but also um, it increases the more you really want the job, right? Um, so just remember to relax. If you need to take a moment, maybe there's a public bathroom you can take a moment in where you can, where you can breathe for a little bit um, and then take notes. Um, or maybe in the car, um, you arrive even early, maybe before you walk in, you take a moment to, to breathe a little bit um, before, you, before you go in. Um, it's also okay when you go to answer a question, whether it's on the phone, virtual, or in person, it's okay to take a second before you answer it. Um, there, you might feel pressure to start answering that question right away, but make sure you've given yourself the time to fully process the question. Um, so for virtual and phone interviews, um, number one, call or link in five minutes before, um, if five minutes before um, allows the employer to know that you're ready to go uh, for when they are ready for you, okay? Um, find a quiet space that won't be interrupted. Uh, no pet, uh, no hearing pets, um, no hearing people from the other room or inside the room, no TV on. Um, keep, put yourself in this space that there won't be any distractions and your interviewers won't be interrupted by things. Um, on the same note, make sure that you are aware of the space that you are showing to the camera. Okay, so be aware of what of what you show behind you. So think about that for a little bit. What are you, <laughs> uh, what are you projecting if you're going to be taking a video conference? Um, think about whether your your camera is on and off. Um, are you on mute? Please be cognizant. I know that we've all heard horror stories. Okay, so just make sure you're being aware. Um, and then <laughs> we all know who you are don't print on camera and don't stare at yourself either. All right. Um, whether you are 
on the phone or you're, you're meeting with them virtually, make sure that you make more of an effort to speak clearly because you now have this thing that's in between you and them. And so that kind of creates, um, can create some issues um, and can create um, it, it, different things that can happen. Um, so make sure that you speak clearly. Uh, and then as always, you can take notes if you are an active um, listener, uh, um, sometimes an active reader, sometimes it just helps as you're, as you're thinking through your answer. All right, question prep tips. Um, any answers that need to be professionally related, um, they are from class, their work, or um, per, um, a quality experience with like community or professional organizations. Um, again, it's okay to take a breath um, and make sure that you are fully thinking through the question that they ask you. Um, help the employer see you um, as a part of the team in the position that you're interviewing for. How do you match well? Always relate it back to, to how you're going to match what they need really well and how you're a good match for the organization itself. So how, do you, how are you going to help them meet their mission or vision? Um, concerned about something negative? All right. If they, if they ask you a negative-based question, which is, what are your weaknesses? Um, or if you have a termination in your employment history, um, number one, be honest. Um, always turn a negative into a positive. Um, you can show growth. Um, use examples that allow you to show growth. What did you learn from that experience? Um, focus on you and not someone else focus on you. It's not about, it's not about that coworker or that crappy manager. It's about you. All right. What did you do? Um, and what did you learn? All right. It does, it looks very poorly on you, um, to, to bash a former employer. Um, because in, in this context, you're asking to, to be employed by someone else. All right. Um, don't volunteer negative information about yourself um, if you don't necessarily have to. Um, so it, wait for the for the employer to bring things up. All right, top interview questions. So when am I likely going to be asked? And they revolve around really these six different areas, um, which. Um, What's your greatest achievement? So think about some really good accomplishments that you've had that you can talk about. Uh, what do you know about the company? Make sure you're able to talk about why you want to work for them. What information in their history about what they do is going to be of real interest to you. Um, how would someone describe you? It could be coworker, supervisor. It could be subordinate. Um, maybe you've had someone... Um, that's worked for you. Maybe you've been in, in a leadership position. Um, how would that individual describe you? Strengths and weaknesses, tell me a time when, and tell me about yourself. We're gonna look into these in a little bit more detail. So the, the tell me about yourself, where do you see yourself in five years? Why are you here? Um, is really your opportunity to give them your elevator pitch, okay? So consider um, how you are a, your person position and person organization fit. What are the skills, achievements, and job tasks you can talk about? Uh, why do you want the job? Why do you want to work for the company? Um, and, and give a bit of an overview of who you are. And usually this is going to be um, a question that, uh, or an answer excuse me, that should be um, around 90 seconds. Strengths and weaknesses. So um, for strengths, you, you want to directly identify a shared weakness that has been um, put in the job description. It's another opportunity to highlight how you're a good fit. Weaknesses. Um, they are looking for you to show self-awareness and growth again. So turn that negative into a positive, something that you're truly working on. Uh, tell me a time when, these are the dreaded 
oh my gosh, I have to come up with an example. Um, the long, after they ask you this, the longer it takes, the more anxiety that you have. Um, so the behavioral based question, number one, um, some of the most common ones are tell me when you failed at a project, tell me when you were successful or had a successful customer service moment. Um, tell me a time when you demonstrated leadership skills. Tell me when, tell me a time when you are part of a team. Um, so start thinking of some good examples of your previous work behavior that could be an indicator of future performance. So that's a little bit of what they're looking at. Um, so when they ask you, give me an example of, or tell me a time when, there are three parts to answering this question. Number one, context. What was the situation? Two, what was your action? What did you do? And number three, what were the results? And it's even better in the results when you can talk about um, good data um, and how maybe you improve something and that you can, and you can prove that with data. All right, questions for the interviewer. Um, you will always have them. You will always have questions, always have questions um, because you should be interested in this position, right? That you're interviewing for. So you should always want to know more. So always have questions. Um, are there any goals for this position that a candidate should be aware of? So maybe there's a future goal of um, it leading a new department. You're going to need to know that, right? Um, what are opportunities for, for career growth? So it's important to talk to the employer about career trajectory for you, because if you're listening to this, you are likely wanting to obtain a higher level of education. So you're likely going into a new career. So you wanna know that um, the position that you are exploring is going to help fit your career needs. Um, so you can ask um, what, um, what's the culture like for, uh, for, for promoting from within? Right. Um, what are the primary results that you want to see from this position? How am I going to be evaluated? Um, there are a series of questions um, that employer might say something that sparks a question in your brain. So write it down. Um, but you always want two or three for um, set and ready to go. There might be something in the job description that really perks your interest that you want to hear more about. Maybe you expected to hear more about it during the interview and the, the interview di interviewer didn't go into it. Maybe you need some clarification. Um, but the number one thing that we never ask about is compensation or benefits during a first round interview, unless an employer brings it up. Sometimes employers do want to know your salary requirements, um, even in a cover letter. Uh, sometimes they want it on an application that's a little different. Um, if it's required, you can fill that out. Um, but in an interview, you don't bring it up unless an employer does. It's like taking someone out for a first date and then asking them what they make in terms of salary. All right, we just don't do it. So closing the interview. Um, so the interviewer usually will uh, signal that the interview is over because they've had questions, they've turned it over to you. Um, and then you might say something like, I believe that's all that I have for you in terms of questions. And they might say something like, okay, that's great. Or do you have any questions for, for me? Um, no, great. Well, this is what's next in the hiring process. And it's typically going to sound something like, um, we really appreciate you coming in today. Uh, we do have other, other candidates that we are interviewing. Um, and those interviews should be done by the middle of next week or in two weeks. Um, so we should be letting you know within that period of time um, what, our, what our decision is. All right. You have an opportunity to restate a personal commercial. So. Um, again, you can reinforce your interest in the position. 
um, and really comment on some on um, some ways that you feel that you are really good for the job. Um, shake hands, uh, shake hands, and make eye contact um, with individuals. Do that throughout the interview. Um, uh, today, um, you can also do an elbow bump um, with with what's going on in the world. Um, thank them for their time, um, and then you must send a thank you email or note. You can uh, you can actually send a thank you note, um, but you send a thank you, and you do that within twenty four hours. Because if it's between you and someone else. They're looking for a way to differentiate. So make sure you've taken that time to do that. All right. It also shows um, a, a level of professionalism. And it reinforces um, that after having the interview and having a little bit of time to think about it, you're still interested. All right. After the interview, evaluate what experience um, you had and how you think it went. Is there something that you could have answered a little bit better? Um, what kind of, uh, think about the type of questions that they asked um, and, and evaluate your experience. And yes, we all tend to think, I wonder, you know, oh, I think they're going to call me. They may not. Some of you be like, oh, no, they're definitely not going to call me for a next round. Um, so, you get a sense of that feeling. Um, if you're, if you get into the car after an interview and you drive away and you're crying, that's probably an indication of how you feel, not only about the interview about, but about that, uh, about that opportunity. Um, it is okay that you mess up. It is more important that you learn from it. I've had every single kind of interview experience, um, so you want to be resilient because you are human. Um, you may, may mess up. You may never hear from that employer. So you may never know why they didn't hire you. Even if you think you're the best person for, for the job. Um, but we don't ghost employers. I, and, and I know that it's becoming a, a bit more of a trend now. And I know that there are some that um, there are uh, people that have gotten frustrated with not hearing from employers, but we don't ghost, okay? Um, the other thing to think about related to all of this is something that you may not want to hear. Not every opportunity is meant for you, especially when you start to look for after graduation positions, you might feel really pressured to find that position and to start your career and start it off on the right foot. Um, so that takes finding the right fit. And that's okay. Um, remember, how they treat a candidate will reflect how they treat an employee. So if you had a poor hiring experience or a poor interview experience um, and, and, you, and some red flags were raised about who they are as an employee and as a, and, um, as a company, um, that's probably an indication of what it's going to be like to work for them. And on that note, discrimination and employee rights. In general, no, they don't have to give you the job, but there should be equal opportunity to be considered for the position. So in the United States, we have certain things about us that are, are, we are not allowed to be discriminated against for, okay? We call those protected classes. And so really we focus a lot on gender, religion, ethnicity, national origin, um, age. Um, there's also um, disability as well. Um, sexual orientation. So there are things that not only do you not want to necessarily reference in your interview answers, um, but they're not really allowed to ask them themselves as well. So uh, marital status and children that relates more to um, gender and being female. Um, as, as far as gender being a protected class. Um, 
And age, by the way, age is 40 and up. So I, I, I want you guys to, to think about this. You can't discriminate against anyone that is 40 or older, but that also makes it, um, makes it not illegal to consider someone's age if they are under 40. So um, if you are asked illegal or discriminatory questions, um, you don't have to answer the question. There's a couple of ways that you can go about this. Number one, um, if you don't answer the question, you can tell them, I don't feel comfortable answering that question. I feel it's inappropriate. I'd rather focus on um, how um, my previous position had me do a lot of the things that you're asking of this position or how my education really helped prepare me. So take it back to the position. Um, you could say, I don't feel comfortable um, answering that question, and I'm going to opt to to um, stop this interview as we as it is right now. So you can just stop the interview. Um, all right, some um, pre-employment screening. So some of the things that um, they are going to to look in um, in on when considering you. So. There are reference checks. So my suggestion is if you get into the hiring process, um, second round interviews, and you really think they're gonna offer um, you the position, make sure you check in with your references. Um, there's nothing worse than being surprised, getting that surprised phone call, hey, do you remember so-and-so? So you might wanna check in with the people, with the references that you sent them. Um, criminal check. So um, FBI is federal. There's a federal check. And then Ohio is BCI, the Bureau of, Bureau of Criminal Investigations. Um, they'll check that you actually graduated. Um, they'll check where you've worked before. Um, if you are responsible for transportation in, in, in any way, and it could be that, that you're using a company car, um, driver's license history. Um, credit checks. Yes, they can look into um, your financially, your credit history. Um, and uh, that could be um, if you are going to be in a leadership or supervisory experience, or especially if you're going to be in an industry where it's heavy in finance. All right, so if you have any questions for us, please schedule some time with the Career Center staff. We'll answer some questions. We'll talk about your, your particular circumstances um, and we'll definitely help you out. I'd imagine if you're, if you're listening in or watching this workshop, you likely have an interview scheduled in the near future. So schedule some time with us. We'll go through a mock interview with you. Again, thank you so much for checking out these, these on-demand resources. If you have any questions or if you need us, please don't hesitate to reach out.